Thank you. Uh, I want to start uh, with a question first, uh, just to let it hang over in your minds during my presentation. What's, uh, what is the architect's position in urban scale, or what it should be? This is a graphic depicting the number of transistors scientists can fit into a chip in advancing years. Uh, it's nothing uh, related with urban or architectural graphics. But this graph is also known as the picture of Moore's law. The capacity, uh, this is also a similar graph again, showing the capacity of hard disks increasing by years. And every year it, it, it is doubled. And as we can see within each peri period, um, the capacity doubles, uh, but uh, it is affordable still. Um, and this is a graph showing the world population increase. The red line shows the population living in urban areas, whereas uh, the green shows the rural population. Uh, as you can see, it, the Moore's law can also be seen here I mean, as a pattern. And this is the population growth of Istanbul, uh, which shows a similar accelerating trend after mid-70s. Uh, but hopefully it's going to be decreasing after 2010. Uh, keeping in mind uh, in the law of Moore, or the Moore's law, I'll jump to the architectural scene now. Uh, these are two screenshots from my Google Reader page, showing only the posts that are retrieved from a single architectural block uh, on the last two days. The publications feeding us with images of new architectural production from all over the world increased by numbers, and consequently, we realized that there is an enormous production of architectural, pro uh, enormous production in the architectural scene. The images shown here are from recently finished buildings in various places around the world, and these 20 images are served to be by, by a single architectural publication in one single day. Uh, actually, what I am trying to say is that architect architectural production shows a similar trend to Moore's law. It has surpassed our capacity to perceive, to think deeply about it, and to understand the architectural knowledge by looking at the buildings produced. Last century, uh, we had been busy to talk upon on a few buildings which many books and articles have been written upon. But today, the pace of architectural production, production is much more than its perception in a critical sense. It's becoming harder and harder to write an architectural history of today's century because it will take longer for all the production to, uh, to precipitate. Architectural profession changed little since the beginning of the previous century. When William Morris was designing the Red House, garden cities were being built. When Le Corbusier designed and built Ronchamp Chapel, he was also designing the Plan Voison, and fortunately it was not realized. Today, similar attitudes are being carried by current architects, extending their uh, reach from product detail. Architects are now not only work to rehabilitate the existing area of, areas of the cities, but they are also hired to create new cities, even in desert. Given that condition, uh, how should the new generation of architects deal with the urban problems? I claim that as architects, we don't yet understand what the cities are demanding from us. Uh, let me show you this uh, statement from, uh, by a couple of images that I took from uh, Istanbul streets. Uh, this is a cafe uh, in one of the most prestigious neighborhoods of Istanbul, Teşvikiye. And this is a similar uh, human behavior in, in improvisation, this time at Tarlabasha. This is Karaköy Perşembe Pazarı district where uh, there are hardware stores located. And this is the night scene. Um, all of those boxes that you see on, in the walls uh, are actually shops. And uh, real people uh, which have families and children earn their lives from these boxes. This is a mobile tea house selling tea and soda, which is located one of the busiest ferry terminals in Istanbul and very close to the Beşiktaş. And this is a shoe store, as you may call it. And near to that area, you can see similar shops which use the streets as shop windows, or even the buildings itself. A similar use in another build district. And this is a picture which shows an open neighborhood market in Istanbul, uh, which is set up only for one day, and only one, for one day in a single week. 
and a similar one in the other side of Istanbul. And we look at these pictures and we saw that uh, clearly those people do not need architects because they are solving, the, solving their own problems and they can survive quite happily without us. Uh, let me show you when, what happens when we intervene in a shopping process like here. I want to make a striking comparison on, on uh, how well an organically growing and not specifically designed space serves better than a space that is totally designed in the finest detail. This is covered bazaar. Uh, it's built in 15th century and uh, it, it has more than 3,600 shops located in 45,000 square meters area and between e each day between what between 250,000 and 400,000 daily visitors are visiting this building. And this is the uh, JYR shopping mall in Shishli. They are both in same scale, the two images. And it's built in 2000. Only it has 343 shops and occupy uh, 350,000 square meters covered floor area in 62,000 square meters plot. And estimated daily visitors are 50,000 to 150,000 a day. So the numbers are, I mean, very striking. And this is the interior of the covered bazaar. And this is the interior of the shop, Jawari shopping mall. On almost the number of those, the people in these two different shops are the same. As architects, we are more oriented towards designing the end finished product. Uh, imagining that the scenario in our minds uh, will work out. However, we are, not, we are never interested in designing the overall process uh, of a place in its whole life cycle. Sometimes the done designed informal spaces are the best working ones. Uh, when Richard Burda told us before the uh, Urban Age Conference six months ago or something like that, he wanted to architectural teams for the Urban Age Istanbul's conference. And as architect architecture center, we had selected five young offices, which are eight artı, EAB architecture, PAB, so, and Superpool. What we did is actually a bit different than a usual workshop. We didn't address any problem for the teams to work on. The brief was very vague, and uh, they had to choose what they think is important in Istanbul to be solved primarily. No site, no location, no problem was defined. All the teams had to come up with their own problematic issues, and they had to choose a site to demonstrate that issue, and they had to suggest a solution for that, which will also have grounds to be realized. At the first phase, the, the teams spent quite amount of time since they don't have a client for the, with the brief as they used to. Uh, they had to be their own clients, which, uh, which, is, which was a process which we, as architects, are never used to be. All the teams came up with different ideas, problems, and sites, but there is a common binding thread in all of the studies that we have done here, and let me explain it with a metaphor. This is a scene from a Apollo 13 movie, uh, where the engineers in down in Houston had to solve a mechanical ventilation problem uh, which occurred in the Apollo 13 above, uh, which threatens the lives of the astronauts. Their time was limited, and they had to come up with a creative solution to invent a basic mechanical device to provide fresh air again to astronauts. They are only allowed to create the solution with the equipment and materials that are existing inside Apollo 13 above. And they, they created this device, and it described it how to uh, create it again in the Apollo above. And this is the astronaut which created the same solution up above in thir Apollo 13. This is a striking uh, example on creative, uh, creativity in problem solving, and I think it, it can be applied to urban issues. With, and what we did with, together with the five teams was similar to that process. And I, uh, I am using the metaphor for reverse engineering of the method that we used, actually. Uh, we did carefully analyze how the city is working in different parts, and uh, we saw that some parts of the cities are fun functioning quite well, and some are failing. And what we th the things that we learned from the working parts uh, led us to the solutions for failing parts. And I would like to explain in more detail of these valuable solutions, but uh, since time is limited, I had to choose only three of them, and I apologize 
for the uh, rest of the two teams. Uh, this is a project by Eight Heart and uh, it's called Reclaiming Valleys. Istanbul's most unique feature, as you might already I mean, witness that, is topography. And it may seem fantastic from some point of view, but uh, there are other places that is, it creates problems, and especially at the Valley, Valley Basin. A few months ago, after we uh, finished uh, this spatial study uh, with the teams, uh, an enormous flood just struck Istanbul. And it are to uh, choose to work on how to reclaim the valleys occupied by legal or illegal settlements, since they are natural uh, ecological corridors, which bring breezes and fresh air to the city. And the city is well, and they also prevent the flooding by uh, carrying the rainwater down to the sea. Eight Art decided to copy the Henry Prost rule, which worked quite well uh, in the historic peninsulas, and it kept a distinct skyline until today, and adapted this rule uh, to be applied to the valleys. And this is a different approach than the existing valley building code, since uh, it takes the topograph topographical features, the altitude from the base of the valley, as a criteria rather than the distance to the riverbed on the horizontal map scale. And this was the solution they uh, came up with and uh, by clearing away the buildings uh, above the 40 meters level of the valley basin and relocating them on, on the borders of the valley, they can come up uh, by freeing up the valley uh, by green areas and also inserting some super, uh, super social structures uh, in order to host some public functions. Another uh, project uh, was led by the team SO, and it's called Naturban or Nature Plus Urban. Uh, this is one of the most actively used coast parks in Istanbul, and so decided to look at why and how some public spaces are working, and if this could be turned into a working tool for uh, other places. And they tried to think about the Sultan Beyli area, uh, an illegal settlement, uh, which is on the border of the northern forest. And keeping up the northern forest as it is, I mean, is a very uh, big uh, issue and a debated issue. And still, we couldn't find a solution to keep those uh, forests by pure legal uh, prevention. Even though the forest and sea has different spatial and physical characteristics, both creates a borderline to the settlement. However, the coast becomes a living place, whereas forest seen as something as a barrier for the development. Uh, it's almost becoming impossible to prevent the northern forest by legal terms, as I said before. Those become inadequate and rarely offenders are punished. punished. And since the city grows by eating up these forests, and these illegal settlements are eventually legalized in, in each uh, election process. This is the project site so choose to work on uh, in Sultan Vale area. And uh, this is a schematic version of a section of the project uh, by integrating nature with the urban tissue. Uh, so claim that uh, hopefully those people living on those illegal settlements will, uh, will uh, preserve the forest by themselves by owning them. And so design the repetitive model which can be applied along the borderline of the forest. And this is the last project I would like to mention, and it's my, made by Superpool. Superpool decided to think about the relationship between the cars and the uh, open street spaces. And when we talk about the traffic problems in the cities, we always think about the moving traffic. But actually, the static traffic or the parked cars on the street levels is a crucial problem as well. Each day, 400 new cars are getting into the city, and the narrow streets are invaded by the cars. And Superpool looked at, I mean, that uh, actually the uh, street level of uh, Istanbul is actually very active. As the public activities are occurring in the streets by informally. And the cars uh, which invade these streets are actually preventing these public activities to happen. And so they divide, decided to make uh, parking structures within five minutes walking distances in neighborhoods. 
uh, and which will also cover the whole parking areas. And eventually those parking spaces become, uh, pa uh, the, the parking spaces will also collect all those buildings and uh, cars, and those cars will also lead to, uh, lead to the uh, streets to be free from the cars. And those parking structures are uh, also be going to be used as some uh, public uh, uh, functions. They will host some public functions. And for the last uh, minute, I would like to uh, uh, put some magnifying glass on our uh, self, self, make a self-criticism. And, uh, and how can we, the, the, these projects can be implemented and realized? Uh, and we as intellectual people, sociologists, architects, planners, all of us are trying to solve the social and physical and economical problems of the cities by using our collective knowledge. We analyze, examine, and survey, produce numbers, graphs, and sometimes even test our ideas. We are trying to fix the conflicts, contra contradictions that are embedded in each city, which makes the life of its citizens harder. Even though we don't have an ideal city image in our mind, we still know that something should be changed in order to enhance the human life in cities. However, we have to admit that we are allured with these images of these conflicts, contradictions, and extremes of the cities. These are all en enchanting images. We, pra we praise diversity, heterogeneity in instead of homogeneity and banality. On the other hand, we rarely know the way to enhance the physical conditions by keeping the inherent contradictions of these cities which, we make, them, which make them vibrant. This is a very insidious threat in the interest of intellectuals on urban conditions. The knowledge we have and the new, the new information we produce through our, through our intellectual and academic studies cannot penetrate into the real administrative life of the cities. We still cannot communicate enough with the governing bodies, municipalities, and developers which we shape our cities. Thus, our analysis is rarely grasped by the right people in the administrative positions, our solutions or suggestions very rarely become realized. Mostly they rest at shelves. We still couldn't create a successful interface to transfer our knowledge to those in administration. Besides, the inherent basal metabolic, metabolic rate of cities is much faster than our reactions and much wider than our visions. Thus, we as intellectual people working on the architecture of urban conditions, we are mostly coming behind and thus find our, ourselves in a reactionary position rather than a forecasting position. However, the increasing interest uh, on urbanism in various intellectual circles creates its popular culture as well, which redoubles the threat I am mentioning about, the whole real life problems of the cities, and most uh, important, the problem of the people living in those cities be may become a kind of a spectacle, which is decreased into the attractive looking graphs, surveys, numbers, or images. We have to think more precisely, carefully about the consequences of our intellectual interest on urban issues, I think, since the actual issue may easily become a spectacle, reducing it to down, down to an exotic realm, which is very dangerous, I think. The exotification of problems into two-dimensional images or graphics, and I think that's what I sh uh, we should, as intellectuals, avoid. Thank you.